Hey there, you are watching New Vision TV News. I am Ruth. You know, so just starting off the bulletin is the news around Uganda, where we look at stories making the headlines across the country. Now, Vision Group and Sanda started running a series on police bond for sale. So far, the two police officers who were captured on our investigation cameras extorting money from people have been arrested and are currently held by the Uganda Police Professional Standards Unit. We have taken it further and engaged experts who advise on how police bond should be handled so that public, the public is not taken for granted by police officers. Let's take a look. Akakaluka police chintu chikulu nyo kubanga omuntu wakwa atiwa obabu wazo msangu sema teka agamba nti tumutuwa lanti talina msangu okutu sanga chikote esazewo oba nge e, mbonereze mwade chibonerezo kati abantu banji bata nso kwe mulugunya ntibo bagenda police bajja kochi sente na ye nga etyandi bade dale kitufu akakaluka police te wali muntu ali na kusasula ebye byo kuba nti babajja ko sente chendoza nga mboga mi mwakoze anda cover ndoza nabo babikola anda cover we are called a court or not for so called in Yen. Navacamaro Sumedom Sango, a court in Nak Sala Ochida, like a Savak Sumedom Sango. No kids of our goods of Vato Aguza, Monico Mukon, Ovato in a plead. Monico Mukono, Ogamben Saba, Sabako in Midido. The full report will be in the special report at the end of this bulletin. Let's continue looking at more stories making the headlines across the country from Wakiso district. The plan to elevate and tell municipality to city status has proven diverse among residents, including the leaders of Kajansi Town Council. Now in Tebe, which currently houses the State House, several garrison barracks and the International Airport is among the towns to be upgraded to a city effective July 1st. The two divisions, A and B, that currently make up the municipality are to, be, be, are to become a single divi, a, a city division, I beg your pardon, while Katavi and Kajansi town councils are to be merged to form another city division. But this plan has drawn mixed reactions from local leaders and the public in equal measure. During a stakeholders meeting in Kajans on Tuesday, former parliamentary election contestant Grace Nakamanya said turning Entebbe into a city would widen and improve the infrastructure network of the area. But Richard Lu Luwama Mukubiabiansi, the, the chairman of Nomalanda Ward, said the move was not part of the second national development plan. Instead, he felt that Wakiso district in which Entebbe is located should be the one turned into a city. According to the Local Government Act, an area must have a population of 500,000 people, facilities, institutions, developments and an enabling environment that attracts people to work and stay. Moving on to Fort Porter Town, the Insurance Regulatory Authority has asked all schools to join insurance schemes so as to mitigate potential risk. Ibrahim Kadunabi Lubega, the authority's chief executive, said most schools wait to take insurance after incurring losses, for example, in fire outbreaks. He was meeting head teachers from Renzo region on Tuesday. Now, he said the Insurance Regulatory Authority decided to move in every region of the to sensitize the heads of schools on insurance. He said the authority allowed schools to pay their premium every time as opposed to a monthly fee. Moving on to Soroti District, the government is said to commission a malt mirror in Soroti processing a fruit factory in Arapai sub-county this Saturday. Construction of the factory kicked off in April 2015 and it was scheduled to have been completed in March 2016 to kickstart commercial production of processed mangoes and oranges. The 48 billion shilling factory is a proposed government intervention aimed at supporting value addition in a 
food processing for the promotion of industrial growth, income diversification and increasing household incomes in Teso subregion. Yodaya Kadodi, a senior economist in sorry at Uganda Development Corporation recently disclosed that the facility has a processing capacity of six tons of oranges per hour and two tons of mangoes for the same period of time. The factory is to process the improved variety of mangoes ranging from Valencia, Hamlin, Washington and Navo. Now local mangoes, local mango varieties will not be processed. News from Lira District, an anti-corruption activist who boldly accused the Office of the Rest and District Commissioner of Lira of being involved in acts of corruption before Lieutenant Colonel Edith Nakalima in Lira made last month has been detained at Lira Central Police Station for a week now on the allegations of extortion of money. Mike Adoko, a resident of Ayako Parish, was detained on April 4, 2019 when he reported to police to find out what the motto was after hearing his name on local radio stations. When the Nakalima-led State, State House Anti-Corruption Unit visited Lira last month, Adoko accused the office of the RDC, DISO and RISO of being involved in corruption acts. He also expressed fear that some whistleblowers are reportedly arrested in the area. Adoko said he's being fought by the people on whose toes he stepped. We are grateful that you have turned up in big numbers to hear from us. News from Kitgum District, the Bishop of Kitgum Diocese, the writer of Rand Wilson Kitara, has finally received the car donated by President Yorim Seven last year. Kitgum Resident District Commissioner Christopher Mara handed over the great Mitsubishi Registration number UBE 846Z to the Bishop of All Saints Cathedral, Michkan, on Sunday. Now, Kitgum Municipality MP Beatrice Anua, together with many Jibland Christians, witnessed the brief ceremony. Closing off the news around Uganda is a story from the Hori district where 200 members of the Uganda People's Congress UPC and Forum for Democratic Change FDC parties have joined the National Resistance Movement NRM party in Dohore district. The convents were led by the former Dohore LC5 chairperson Godfrey Kelo who crossed from FDC. They were received by Dohore North MP Paul Amuru. Okello regretted the time he spent opposing the NRM government and asked to be forgiven. He said he was convinced to cross to the NRM party after his sub county posted President Shurim Seveni last year during the Thanksgiving prayers in Amuru. That is the news around Uganda. Now let us take a look at the news around East Africa and around the world. Now let's take a look at the news around East Africa. We start from Kenya, where a Kenya Barclays bank manager at Nairobi's Queens, where branch has been implicated in a fair gold scam by a victim who escaped being coined of two million shillings. The victim says it is the branch manager who had convinced him to pay for the fair gold being sold by a suspected cornman who has already been charged in court. Now only last month, the Kenya Barclays bank branch was in the news for similarly dubious reasons as counterfeit currency was being kept in self-deposed box and being used to pay victims uh, who are selling valuable properties. Let's go to Tanzania, where Tanzania may not grow as fast as Ali expected in the coming year. The International Monetary Fund has reduced its forecast for the country's economic growth from 6.6 to 4.2% in 2020. News from Rwanda. Rwanda President General Paul Kagame makes changes at the top of the Armed Forces Command. Kagame has promoted the commander of the Merchandise Division Major General Jacques Mupenzi to the rank of Lieutenant General and appointed him as the Army Chief of Staff. Now Lieutenant General Jacques Musemakweri, who has been the Chief of Staff, has now been appointed Commander of the Reserved Force. 
Closing off the news around East Africa is a story from Uganda where a Ugandan fisherman recovered a body of a Saudi Arabian tourist who drowned in River Nile while trying to take a selfie at Kalagala Falls. Al Subai Muthaka slipped and drowned on Sunday in the treacherously beautiful foaming water at a spot which is popular with both locals and tourists. Police has taken Mathaka's body to Mulago National Rifar Hospital, from where it will be flown to Saudi Arabia for Islamic burial rites. Let us take a quick look at the news around the world. From South Korea, South Korea President Moon Jae-in is stepping into his role as mediator again as he flies off to Washington for a meeting with the United States President Donald Trump on Thursday. But as Moon heads to the U.S., North Korea is looking for older friend Moscow as Kim Jong-un seeks a way out from under the sanctions that are now overwhelming the country's economy. From Jerusalem, Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu secured a clear path to re-election with re religious rights, but is said to hand him a parliamentary majority despite a close contest against his main centrist challenger, according to a vote tally. From Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe peeled on Tuesday for $613 million in aid from local and foreign donors to cover food inputs and help with a humanitarian crisis after a severe drought and a cyclone that battered the east of the country. Closing off the news around the world, we go to the United Kingdom where EU leaders urged Emmanuel Macron not to humiliate Theresa May at the historic summit where they are expected to impose a lengthy delay to Brexit on the UK. But the French president is the most hardline of EU leaders and wants to impose humiliating conditions on the delay, such as behavior reviews of the UK every three months that are designed to stop a new prime minister disrupting the EU. Now, German Chancellor Angela Merkel and European Council President Donald Tusk have urged the French president to show respect to avoid souring relations, but Brexiters claim the UK UK is already a laughing stock. Away from the news around East Africa and around the world, let us look at our daily pal of Africa series, which is Kitagata Hot Springs. Now, did you know that there is a hot spring in Uganda where residents bathe from at the same time, draw water, and drink it? These hot springs are known as Chitagata and they are located in Shema district. Let's take a look. In western Uganda lies the natural Chitagata Hot Springs. Chitagata Hot Springs is located approximately two kilometers southeast of the town of Chitagata, an urban center in Shema district. <laughs> The spring is divided into two, and one part is believed to have been used by the former king of Ankole, giving it its name Echomgabe, or belonging to the king, and the other spring is believed to have healing powers, known as Mulago, named after Uganda's largest natural far hospital. The activities that take place here are bathing from the warm water, boiling of eggs by the locals, and also getting drinking water since there is no need for reboiling. The water is said to warm up to 80 degrees Celsius. These springs have become a must visit to Ugandans visiting the district for the first time and also tourists from outside the world. From Apollo of Africa Stories, visit our website which is www.newvision.co. Dot EUJ forward slash Pal of Africa. Our newspaper, The Sunday Vision, is also another home of adventures. Grab your copy every Sunday for Pal of Africa Stories. And now let's pick business in the handshake with Lynn Komjisha. 
Hello there. This is the handshake with me in comedy. I have with me Paul Bosharizi. Paul, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, the cabinet is uh, proposing that the NSSF and <laughs> people can pick their monies at 45 years yeah. from NSSF. You said cabinet. Mm. Why? So, so there's a there's an NSSF I think amendment bill coming to the house. Oh. And it is passed through cabinet. Of course, yes. Um, and uh, you know, so cabinet cabinet gets a bill, looks at it, and decides we like this, we like this, we like this, we don't like this. They leave it in or take it out and pass it back to parliament. Then parliament will start the will go to the committee, start the debate, and eventually pass it as a bill. So that's at the stage we're at now. What happened? What do you mean? What happened? Yeah, what happened? I mean, we had we agreed. Well, <laughs> they agreed uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> that it is at fifty. Five. Yeah, 55, sorry. That's the original law. Yes. Which was So they're trying to amend it. Yes. Why? I think, okay, I, I, the, I, I, they haven't uh, said, but I, I suspect there's been a lot of uh, talk of, mm -hmm. you know, by the time I get my money at 55, I'm too old to do anything with it, and why don't you give it to me earlier? Uh, so I think this is a concession by the cabinet, not giving all the money. Right. They give you a percentage of your money. I think it also depends on how that money will be given. So for example, there have been proposals that even if uh, Lean is entitled to a certain percentage of our money, that money can only be used, for example, to put a down payment on a house. So you wouldn't just get it cash. Mm. Yeah, so, so those are some of the suggestions uh, th th that's happening. But one, that's one. Two, people, of course, people have been complaining. But I think it's best, it would be nice if they did the way I, s I, I said, that uh, it would be targeted for certain things, not just to give you and... Yeah, sometimes you just uh, need the cash and, and you know that's what most people want. Yeah, exactly. That's what most people want. Uh, people are under the impression that uh, they can't invest now because they have no money. Mm -hmm. But it's the other way around. Um, you don't get the money and then you invest. You first plan for the investment, then you get the money. Yeah. <laughs> it's like shopping. If you went shopping with money in your pocket, you of can't course. window shop. The first shop you enter, you'll buy. Everything. Exactly. But when you have no money, you look around and then you, you probably get a better decision. Right. So I think we, we are failing as um, beneficiaries to to plan ahead. We're just waiting for 55, you know, in the old case. 55, for when it comes, then I will be a, a super investor. But ideally, what you should be doing is right now, before you get to 55, you should be thinking, drawing up the plans and testing them on a small level, even with the little money you have. So by the time you get your big money... Uh, I'm, looking at 40, <laughs> I'm looking at 45 and thinking... It's far away for it's you. Eh? Uh, no, no, not for me. Uh, how achievable is this? How how good is this? In terms of, uh, I mean, if 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 they pass it, if they agree to it, and and say, fine, people can access their money at forty five. I think it, I, for, for personally, I think it's not a good idea because, uh, for one thing, the original fifty five. Okay, I think it's, I don't think it's a good idea because uh, people are growing older. Yes. So previously, if you got your money at uh, maybe 55, mm -hmm. chances are you have about 10 to 15 years to go. You're probably very sick. Uh, you know, no, just, yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> but now uh, life expectancy has, has, has gone up. The when they were giving, when they said 55, life expectancy was 49. <laughs> Actually, you didn't expect to get your money. Now the life expectancy has gone up to 60, I think it's about 60, 64. Oh, yeah. So why are we bring it down? It just doesn't make sense. Um, but if they use those conditions, I'm saying that it's only targeted for a certain thing, then that's okay. Mm. Can, they can do that. So you, you just have to but target how? What, uh, have, you, have you seen what their proposals are? Uh, no, I haven't. Under no, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the proposals have been subject of discussion, but mm. whether they're the ones that the cabinet has presented is something else. Um, you see, the challenge is that if you change this, this figure just overnight. Yes, yes. There are a lot of people above 45 who will rush and get their money and, and could cause a problem for, for the pension funds or NSSF, that kind of business. That's so the chances are what would even possibly happen is they say, okay, uh, if you're not yet 30, mm -hmm. you can access your money at 45 to give uh, the pension funds time to plan yes. for that. But if you open it up today, it would be total, uh, total chaos. And also the reason uh, why I was saying a condition like uh, housing or 45, it's assumed you've already finished school, yeah. your master's and everything. But who knows, maybe you want to do a PhD or a master's, you can maybe they can use it for education. Mm. So it, it, it'll be interesting to see when the final detail comes out. 
Well, I, I, I look forward because that makes me plan even better. <laughs> Absolutely. I was but you have a lot of years to 45. I was worried about 55, thinking I probably won't be around to get my money. But well, if you don't, if you're not around, your relatives, your relatives, your next of kin will yeah, get your money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's okay. you know, I also have my plans. But you'll be dead, so it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Plans <laughs> over. Thank you, Lynn. In our special report today, we continue with the bond on sale series that has been running since Sunday on all vision group platforms. Now experts are advising on how bo police bond can be handled and how the public cannot be taken advantage of. At several police stations in Uganda, many relatives to suspects in custody have been extorted by police officers to pay for police bond. This prompted an investigation by Vision Group to expose such police officers who are now arrested and undergoing investigation at the Police Professional Standards Unit. Kabwa Community Police Station, OCCID, George Indianavanji, and investigating officer Yukura Muraru were early this month captured on our cameras receiving money from a relative to Rashid Mujani, who was in custody at the time. The investigation team have met various stakeholders to enlighten the public on how best they can avoid being asked for money to pay for police bond which is supposed to be free. A suspect is supposed to spend 48 hours in police custody and later taken to court. But if the police will need more time to conclude with the investigation, a suspect is supposed to be granted bond for free. The only money the suspect's relative is mandated to pay is when the suspect has been presented to court as the judiciary spokesman Solomon Muyita explains what your car ye dino buyenzo ngo muntu oba mazo muleta mu court ye dino buyenza okusale nsimbi ngaka kwa kulizo okuto muntu ko kuche tuita bail Muita asserts that this is a right for a suspect to acquire, but it can only be granted if the suspect has substantial requirements, as he elaborates. We are going to make court on a court so called in Yen. Now, I come out of Sumido Musango, I caught it in a salawati that I can say of Sumido Musango. No kids of our goods of Atta or Guzza, Moniko Mukono, what we not plead. Moniko Mukono. Mwita continues to say that a suspect can acquire this if he or she has substantial sureties. The chairperson of Uganda Human Rights Commission, Margaret Sekaja, looks at the police bond as a right for any suspect who, according to the constitution, is still innocent till proven guilty. Akakaluka police. Into Chikulu Nyo Kubanga Omon to Wakwatiwa Oba was on Sango Semateka Gamba Nti Tumutual and Tainam Sango Octo Sanga Chi, Koti, a Sazeo Oba Gem Bonerism, what date Bonerizo Katia Bantuanji. But I'm so quemulugunya. In Tibaba gained a police ever Jacochi sent. Nay, ye got a chant by the Dalech Doof. A Kakaluka police. The one in Nakusasura. A baby Okuan Tibaba Jaco sent. Chendoz and Boga Mimakoze undercover. Nozanaboba we call undercover. Human rights activist Robert Chirenga from the National Coalition of Human Rights Defenders Uganda says the public is ignorant on how to acquire police bond. In a country with a huge number of illiterates, warnings need to be communicated to people in the language they understand, which is not the case, according to Chirenga. <laughs> Sasa uka kusoma vipande bili mchi. Echukule chumulese mpolisi kutasa mune. Chiranga believes a selling bond to the public can stop if the welfare of police officers is reviewed. 
Echira na chendo za wachi polisi oruse nizo kubange kule. Okuja kubu tamanya baba. Ye mbira ya wa polisi. Omu polisi wa msasua sente meka. Eso omu besako. Omu ezo. Echira. Aba polisi na baba antungafi. Baso mane balaba. Hibintu ya balaba yibakula. Echini cha corruption katichiri institutionalized. The aim of this investigation is to equip the public with knowledge that police bond is known for sale, as it has been the case, or is still even the case, in many police stations across the country. Vision Group investigative project is supported by the Democratic Governance Facility. Vision Group started running stories on how Ugandans are paying for bond at police stations. The bond for sale story will run as a series and they will be highlighting a number of issues. Thank you for watching. That is all I had for you. Remember, you can get more news stories and other programs here on New Vision TV by visiting our website, which is newvision.co.eug forward slash video. You can also follow us on social media. Facebook is The New Vision. Twitter is at New Vision Wire. Instagram is at New Vision Wire. And our YouTube channel is New Vision TV. Catch up with me on my Twitter handle. I am Rothy, the voice.